Hi, this is Jack Kim, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm coming back to you with my Math IA. Alright, so as I promised in the previous video, I told you guys that I'll be showing you guys what I've done with my experiment with my laminar flow and my water gun. So as of right now, I'll be showing you guys what my materials are, and I'll be telling you guys the different functionalities of the materials I've selected. So, if you guys remember what I'm trying to do in my Math IA, I'm trying to manipulate the laminar flow through the different designs of the inside and outside of the uh, water gun. Alright, so I'll start with my insides. So, I got many different types of straws off of the internet market. As you can see, I got white, black, and red, but the color's not the difference. The difference is actually the radius of the pipe. Now, what I've done with the pipes is that I, co I connected them, or I didn't connect them, I made them into a whole bunch. I made that into a cylindrical type shape in order to put it inside the pipe that I will show you guys in a moment. So I have different sizes and different lengths. Hold up. Right. So after the pipe, I was thinking, how should I design my water gun? And that was when I decided to piece up a weird water gun, I'd say. So, this is the long pipe I've used. So, so I thought this was going to be a perfect uh, nozzle, I guess, to shoot out the water. And this would be the part that turns the water on and off. So this spins and it closes and oh, ooh. And of course, I got another part. So this was in order to connect the pipe to the actual long nozzle shoot up part. So, right, it, 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 kind of, it kind of looks absurd, but it was necessary at least when I thought about it initially. So what I did was connect this together. So this is the weird part, so I have two open and close systems, so here I can open and close, and here I can open and close, so which is kind of unnecessary, so I turn this open, I would turn this part to open and close my water gun. So that is the shooting, the sh uh, that, this is like the very end of the water gun. So I'll talk about the other end of the water gun. So in the start of the water gun, we have this thing. So let me explain what this thing exactly is. Alright, so this piece is actually made from a used bicycle. This part is to actually stop the air from coming out, or the water from coming out of the actual water gun. So this is kind of like a stopper. And on the other side, you can see this weird little pipe shaped thing. Well, this is actually, when you see a bicycle, when you see the, <laughs> when you see the part where you put the uh, air inside, this is that part. I thought this was in essential for my water gun because this allows for the air to go inside, but the air doesn't come out. So this system, allows for my uh, water gun to be designed in a way that I really want it to be because I want to trap the pressure, air pressure, inside the water gun. So aside from this design, uh, I had the pump, of course. Now what I really liked about this pump is that it had a pressure gauge, Woo, dust, uh, it had a pressure gauge. So I would be able to check what the pressure was at different points. So I would connect uh, the pressure, uh, the air pump, to my little connecting thingy, and I would pump the water gun out. Alright, so I'll move on to the actual design of the water gun. What did I need to create my water gun? Well, first of all, I had this thing called the long plastic pipe. So this is the long plastic pipe, it's good for spinning if you're good at martial arts. Duh! So I cut different parts off of this thing to actually create the body piece of my water gun. Yeah. The other piece that is less, I guess, big than the one that you just saw is 
the connector. So, what this does is I'd uh, take, I'd slice this up into different pieces, I'll show you guys that later. Uh, and I would connect them so it would be able to twist and turn. So the other piece that was uh, bought but wasn't really used a lot was the long, thin plastic pipe. By the way, this is called a PVC pipe. I'm just being funny. So, the long... So, the long PVC pipe. This is more controllable than the long pipe. And it wasn't really used in my water gun. Except it was used when I was making this thing. So when I connected the top and bottom part, I needed this part because that was the only fitting piece mm -hmm. that I was able to that I was able to find for the little nozzle thing. <laughs> so, lo and behold, my first very sexy water. Alright, I understand this water gun see seems super absurd. To be honest, it is absurd. Um, <laughs> so, the different pieces are actually all here. So this was the tip I was talking about that was going to, that is going to be pumping in the water gun. And the bottom, of course, I got here. I can open and close the nozzle and the water would spew out that way. So, let me explain at least why I created a water gun shaping like this. Well, first of all, I need to create sufficient capacity for water to be uh, put in so that I could actually calculate how much it is spewing out. I, w I wanted a, uh, enough water sample or like the, uh, enough distance coverage so I can tell how uh, efficient my water gun was. But this little baby has a little bit of a problem. So I'd use this part to fill up water. And this top part will be filled up with air. So it's kind of like a typical water gun, but it's not suitable for my experiments. So here is why. Number one, this is not a horizontal pipe, if you can tell. All my mathematical equations were based on the fact that my water gun is going to be horizontal. So after creating this, I was staring at it and I was like, where am I going to use this? Ah, my YouTube video. So I did it right away. I kept it just for this video. Much love. Um, the other part, though, is if I use this water gun, the pressure becomes a variable. So my entire, so my entire experiment revolves around the fact that the pressure is kept constant because I wasn't interested. I wasn't exactly interested in how. The pressure affects the water gun travel distance because the pressure isn't really a matter of design, I guess. It is just how much you pump in or how much you don't pump in. So that doesn't really uh, match up with the general theme of my map IA. So after pumping this, I'd have to keep a constant pressure with the pressure gauge in order to fulfill my experiment. But that is very erroneous, and probably IB is not going to like that, so I chose not to do that. Because it is just simply hard to keep a constant pressure with the pump. I've tried it before, it does not work. Mm. Alright my friends, now I'll be moving on to my second design of the water gun. So as you can tell, I completely simplified the whole entire water gun because I didn't find the need to actually make it into a very complex one. So why not just make it into one that looks super simple that actually works or matches up with my math IA more sufficiently. It's reasonable. Uh, so now I'll be explaining the different parts of this gun. So the most 
obvious thing you would be able to notice is the pressure gauge. So as I've uh, mentioned earlier, a pressure gauge is, in, is essential for my math IA because it, the water pressure needs to be constant. Oh, by the way, I, from the first design to the second design, I switch up to the source of pressure. So if I try to use air as a source of pressure, that kind of screws up the entire uh, experiment because you cannot give a constant flow of water and air at the same time. So instead of that, I thought of a, another way, which is just using water as my source of pressure so that I don't have to put both air and water inside. Mm -hmm. So now I can keep a constant pressure. How do I check that pressure? Of course, the pressure gauge. So I would hook this other end to my faucet and I would be checking if the uh, water pressure is constant at all times, which was constant the whole time. And the second part, so remember the little uh, switch, I guess, for turning on and off? So I got that into this as well. So this is the little switching on and off part uh, of my water gun. And water just dripped onto my pants. Alright, so moving on. Alright, so what is the other part of my water gun? Like, if you look at this water gun, something's probably missing, which is uh, this. So, what is this? Well, it is a nozzle. So I've seen a lot of water gun, uh, or like, so I've seen a lot of laminar flow jets or like a fountain type thing where they shoot out laminar flows out of a huge tank. And I found this piece particularly analogous to that huge piece because, well, the it, it's like a plateau and there's a little hole inside. So I thought this would work. Sadly, it didn't. Because I use a drill to actually make this hole, but the problem is the drill, like, like I, I, I can't cut a perfect circle. Like, even if I look through this little hole, I can tell there are rigid sides to it. Therefore, this isn't a particularly good circle that I can use for my water gun. Well, how did I know that? Well, I did trial and error. And I tried this on, and the problem is the water was spewing all over the place, and I was completely wet after the experiment. I was very pissed, and I was throwing this all around the place. So, yeah. so, I am incapable of drilling a perfect circle, so I got a bit of help from Taobao, which is an online internet, uh, uh, which is an internet, which is a internet store. So I had to find the perfect nozzle, and I found it. So this comes in two pieces actually. So the first piece is the t top tip. So if you can see, if you can see, uh, yeah. So I bought the tip, and I had this bottom. So I just screwed it inside so that it can function as a good nozzle. Now this nozzle actually worked because it was created from a factory and factories are capable of making perfect circles. Hi. Can you hear me? Um, let's see. So this helped, my, helped the design of my experiment a lot because it was actually capable of creating a laminar flow. And that was my final design of the water gun. Perfection. So of course, there are other parts of the water gun that I cannot just simply dismiss. So, this. This may seem like it's useless, but this actually is the, one of the most important parts or materials of my experiment. Remember, remember how the first uh, water gun was a failure because it was not in a horizontal but a vertical structure. Well, if I didn't have this, it completely defeats the purpose of creating a horizontal water gun. Because when I shoot it, I need it to have it in a perfect horizontal uh, nature. That's why I got this little wooden piece so that I can support uh, my water gun to be at a horizontal level. So this helped a lot.
Alright guys, that's it with my material and my, and my initial and my secondary generation design of my water gun. Now, let's move on to the next segment. Alright, so now I will be explaining the thought processing of how I did my initial hypothesis and I'll be moving on to how I adjusted my hypothesis based on the experiment results. So, even before I even head inside and giving you guys my initial hypothesis, it is important to understand what is the difference between, between laminar and turbulent flow. Okay, so, laminar flow is when the water flows in a way uh, where it's completely straight. So laminar flow, there's a, uh, you guys can see this on a daily basis, really. Alright, so now I'll be explaining the design of the water gun in itself and why I decided to use straws. Alright, a basic concept that we have to know is that the volumetric, uh, volumetric flow rate is unchanging even though we use straws. So Q over here would equal to the volumetric flow rate at in, uh, to the, when adding all of these three volumetric flow rates together. So the flow rate here would, in, uh, would equal the amount of volumetric flow rate uh, of these three added together. Okay, so why am I using straws? So straws is the same concept. If I use straws, it is technically splitting the Q to various little uh, volumetric flow rates. And if I do that, I'm able to decrease the amount of Reynolds number. And if I decrease Reynolds number, it becomes more laminar. Also, if I use straws, the uh, pipes become smaller, technically. Uh, so the diameter would decrease. However, the area actually decreases because it comes from this big of area to a smaller area. So the Reynolds number actually would increase. So two of them decreases and one of them increases. And yet I still decided to use straws in order to make the uh, flow more laminar. Why did I do that? Now the reason is because the volumetric flow rate has a larger effect than the area. If you calculate it, um, the volumetric flow rate is approximately three times uh, greater in effect than the area. So if I use straws, because of the volumetric flow rate's um, overwhelming effect on the Reynolds number, the, area bec uh, the effect of the area becomes kind of obsolete or useless because the Reynolds number is al already largely defined by the uh, volumetric flow rate. So based on this part, I was able to decide that I'm gonna use straws. So after that I have decided to use straws, I had to decide where the nozzle was going to be positioned. The reason is, if the laminar flow is situated at the very top, I would have to position the nozzle in a way that the uh, flow that is coming out of the nozzle is most laminar as possible. Now, if the top uh, was laminar, I would have to put the nozzle at the top, middle, middle, the uh, very bottom, then I'll have to put it on the bottom. I had no idea where the laminar flow actually occurs, so upon research, I was able to come across this concept called Bernoulli's Principle. So Bernoulli's Principle is this equation over here, and it is deduced based on the fact of the law of conservation of energy. And it, this person called Bernoulli actually converted the law of conservation of energy to suit um, hydraulics. <clears throat> so this would be the kinematic energy density. This is the 
potential energy density, and this is the energy due to work. What does this mean? So from the energy that is moving from the left to the right area, which is A and B, there is uh, the, the, val the overall value is going to be constant. So the energy that occurs here and the energy that occurs here is equal. Now, <clears throat> I was able to come across another concept called head loss and the concept of friction to actually deduce where laminar flow occurs. So head loss is uh, kind of a concept that ref uh, refutes Bernoulli's principle. Well, it's, head loss is a concept that is used to understand the fact that uh, a friction occurs and a se cross section and uh, head loss and friction is the two concepts that is used to understand that the energy that is occurring on section A and section B is actually different. And uh, the energy that is lost from going from A to B is used at uh, this, these two things. So uh, at an ideal setting where there is no friction, uh, cross sec uh, the section A and B would have the same constant value, but because of head loss and friction, instead of, uh, section A and section B com being completely the same, you have to add these values to Bernoulli's principle for section B to actually equal uh, the constant K that is defined as section A. I'm not going to go through the entire mathematical process, but the gist of it is that using all of these concepts, it was able to be deduced that the very center of the pipe is going to be laminar. And that is where the velocity is the uh, fastest. So <clears throat> the reason why is because of friction. Now, if we think about it, if water goes, uh, like a whole water goes through the pipe, because of the wall and the friction between the water and the wall, the, the, uh, the water that is touching the walls would be slowed down. And therefore, the middle would go fastest, and the middle would be laminar. So now that I've known that the center is going to be laminar, I, I can decide that the nozzle is going to be positioned at the very center of the uh, water gun. So after that, I've understood that the center of the pipe is where the laminar flow, laminar flow occurs. I needed to understand how long of a length that is needed to actually maximize the velocity because because of the friction, I'd say, I was expecting some type of equation that is needed to understand how long of a length that is needed, once again, to maximize the velocity. And that's how I came across this concept called development length. Development length is the amount of length that is needed for the water to be maximized in its velocity, or a turbulent flow to become laminar. So there are two different equations for um, There are, two, there are two different equations for uh, the development length. When it's laminar, uh, the equation looks like this, and when it's turbulent, the equation looks like this. So as you can see, the uh, development length is actually affected by the Reynolds number and the, the development length. In other words, the development length is decreased when, it's, uh, when a flow is more laminar, and it's even more decreased if the diameter is smaller. So if you, let's think about this. If, um, if a straw or a pipe is small in its size, it would take less time for the water to actually develop because there's less water. That's my intuition. When it's larger, it would take a longer time to actually become laminar or maximize in velocity. So based on this, I was able to conclude that, oh, um, the travel distance would be increased if there, uh, if the development length is uh, lessened, because let's think about it, the velocity reaches its maximum point when the development length is less or lesser. So Reynolds number would have to be minimized, and the diameter would have to be minimized. So I thought that the, uh, so yeah, I'll I'll talk more about it um, in my initial hypothesis. So based on my preliminary research, I came down to my initial hypothesis. First of all, the hydraulic diameter would be uh, as 
the smallest possible. The reason behind that is because the smaller the hydraulic diameter is, the more laminar a, a water flow becomes because Reynolds number is less, uh, lesser. Also, if there is a smaller hydraulic diameter, it would decrease the development length. If you decrease the development length, that also means that the amount of distance needed to, uh, for water to actually maximize its velocity would actually decrease. And you want that because uh, the water gun in its total length is limited. And if you want to maximize the velocity and to guarantee or, max or increase the probability that the water spewing out is to maximize the velocity, it is better to have the d a distance uh, or, uh, what is it? Um, or a development length to be as less as possible. And that is why I thought that the hydraulic diameter had to be minimized. On the other hand, I uh, also thought about the length of the straw. So the length of the straw would have to be as long as possible. The reason behind that is that uh, the development length states that there needs to be an absolute amount of length for the water to actually uh, fully develop. And in order to increase the probability of the water to actually fully develop, it is ideal to have a pipe that is as long as possible. And if, so I thought that, and this is my initial hypothesis, where the, develop, uh, where the straw would have to be as small as possible, but as long as possible. So that's my initial hypothesis. All right, so here are my experiment results. So uh, I produced my water gun and I spewed out water out of it. And I found that the distance increased uh, at a general trend. I did multiple different samples. Now the distance increased uh, when the straw length uh, increased, so when it's longer, and when the hydraulic diameter was increased. Uh, did you find out something wrong? about my experiment results? Yes, my hypothesis was completely wrong. The hydraulic diameter, the, uh, the distance increased when the hydraulic diameter increased. So that completely blew away my mind because my hypothesis was stating that the uh, decrease in the hydraulic diameter would actually increase the distance. So I was super, super confused. I was thinking whether or not to drop IB. I was thinking about whether or not I should complete my math IA because I felt like I was completely complete screw up. But don't worry about it. This actually helps your math IA. If you screw up your math IA, uh, at least in the middle, there's still room for you to cover up. And I think I, I've done that well. And, I've show, and I'll show you why. Right, so at this point of my math IA, I was going like, wait, what? And this is probably how you would feel if you're doing an experiment on math IA because your hypothesis was a huge miss. However, don't worry about it. You can, at this point, you'd have to adjust your initial hypothesis and Ivy loves that. And I found that reason and that concept came down to this. Voila. So the concept of drag force is where if the water is, uh, or any object is going through the air, there is this force that drags the object down, or it slows down its movement in the air, uh, uh, what we more, kn more, or what we know as um, air resistance. So drag force is proportional to drag coefficient, and this is the equation for the drag coefficient, and I was able to mathematically uh, deduce the, uh, this equation. So why is this equation? importance. The reason why is because the radius is inversely proportional to uh, the drag coefficient. This also means the radius is inversely proportional to the drag force. Okay, let me explain what this means. This explains force is decreased when the radius is increased. Think about that. We want to minimize drag force because the drag force is what makes the travel distance to decrease. So you want to maximize travel distance, so you would have to minimize drag force. And the way you would minimize drag force based on this equation would be to maximize the radius. So you'd have to maximize the radius in order to make the travel distance to be lo uh, longer than before. So do not fret when something goes wrong with your math IA. You can recover like I did. So here's my conclusion to maximizing the travel distance of the 
uh, water gun. Okay, so first of all, you have to increase the uh, hydraulic diameter of the straw as much as possible because it does create a more laminar um, water flow and you want that because laminar flow uh, does not get as much uh, drag force as a turbulent flow. However, you cannot increase it too much because if you increase it too much, the shaded area here, so this is the pipe and this is the straw put inside. If you increase it too much because of the sides, the sides would create a turbulent flow. That, so that defeats the entire pro, uh, purpose. So you cannot increase the di um, hydraulic diameter of the straw to be too much. So you'd have to find through experimentation, I guess, the optimum uh, hydraulic diameter. Also, uh, the experiment, uh, at least for the straw length, agreed to my hypothesis. So the straw length would be, uh, would be, it would be optimal for the travel distance if it is as long as possible. So those are the two main uh, conclusions I, uh, I was able to come up. First of all, the hydraulic diameter increase and the straw length increase. Okay guys, I understand this is a experimentation math IA and not a lot of math IAs are actually created in this way, but I still hope that after you guys seeing my math IA and its process, I hope you guys understand that the math IA is not that much of a pain. I actually, I actually enjoyed a lot of this part, especially when I uh, was able to understand why my exper experimentation came out in a way that was completely different from my hypothesis. So, uh, I guess, first of all, good luck. And just like, just like how I was able to come overcome a obstacle within my math IA, I hope you guys can do the same for yourself. Alright, thank you guys for watching today once again. Good luck in your math IA. I'll see you next time. I love you.